Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor today. I'm so excited because we have our very special guest. Her name is Shannon Freeman. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our show, and she is a spiritual coach and healer. And today she's going to show you how you could heal yourself. So I'm really excited to hear about this topic. You have to listen to her podcast because they're amazing. She just has so much valuable information to share. And today you're going to be blown out of your shoes because when you hear what she has to say, you're just going to be amazed at some of the things that you could do to heal yourself and to transform yourself into the person you want to become. So Shannon, it's great to have you back. I'm so excited that you're here. You know, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thanks, Stacey, for having me. Um, my name's Shannon. I'm a holistic practitioner based out of Nashville. Um, I specialize in working with women who are ready to end burnout, um, the holistic way and just have a more holistic approach to success. Um, I work with people energetically um, through the vibration of sound and frequency of sound as well as crystals. Wow. I love, you know, I love um, energy healing. I feel like it's so powerful. And a lot of people don't understand the concept of energy healing. They don't realize, you know, using, you know, healing rocks and, and, and how the world is actually, our whole world is run by energy. And, you know, sometimes when people hear energy healing, you know, like you'll have those skeptics and they'll be like, oh, woo woo, you know, but if you look at it scientifically, the whole world is run by energy, you know, without energy, you can't survive, you know, and humans are made of energy, you know, we're atoms, atoms are energy, you know, yeah. we're, you know, um, and, and, um, we're also, you know, like, um, energy is matter, matter is energy. So it's like, you know, scientifically there's, there is tons and tons of information to back up that energy healing does work, you know, and maybe you can explain to people what energy healing is and how it works. Yeah. And I think, um, it's important to note too, that all of our energetic centers, um, in this physical body, the seven chakras, all align with either an organ or a gland, right? So our sacral chakra is our sexual reproduction organ. Our third eye is our pineal gland. Um, and so when you look at it from a standpoint of however long ago, and we did not have the microscopes and the technology, we are still referencing these points of body that are huge, major functions and our, they produce the functions of our body and they help us survive. Um, and all of those energetic centers hold emotion. And so when we talk about disease or dis-ease, um, we have to look at it from a standpoint of what's a reoccurring pattern or a lesson, um, an instance that is negative for some women, you know, we might say that all men are jerks and we only date bad guys and they're not bad guys. There's something that's within your frequency. There's something that you're holding on to in your heart chakra, for instance, um, about self-love. And that's creating this, um, you know, energetic frequency that aligns you with those interactions and those people. Um, and so I think sometimes as a culture and society, we go um, to these sessions, um, you know, like we might go to a boutique gym and we do a really hard workout, but then we will stop through the drive through and get a cheeseburger on the way out and complain that, you know, we're doing the work, but I haven't lost any weight. And I think that's um, similar to with Reiki um, and energetic healing just through various avenues. Um, I really struggled when I first started going to Reiki treatments, I could feel something happening in my body. I just couldn't pinpoint what it was. And I knew that it was something good. Um, and so, you know, ultimately a couple of weeks later, I would have a lot of emotions come up. Um, almost a lot of epiphanies that were surrounded by um, childhood trauma, for instance. And then I would just go get another Reiki treatment and kind of wish it away or like, you know, re up that good feeling. And I think that it's important too, when you're trying to go down this holistic avenue of healing, um, that you have a guide, you have someone that's going to hold your hand, you have someone that can work exactly with each energetic point, um, and guide you through it because it's hard if you don't know how to navigate it on your own, which a lot of us don't. Right. Yeah. It's definitely, you know, I just even recently, you know, I love Reiki and, you know, but I'm not a Reiki specialist, you know, I, and I don't, you know, but I got a book on, you know, self, 
how to how to uh, do it self reiki on yourself and to you know because what I, what I do is is different. I use the chakra bowls, the sound bowls. I do the vibrations. I meditate. You know, I call out to the spiritual guides. I start to really like you know focus on clearing my mind, clearing my body, clearing, you know, and then let the, the good spirits and the energy world come into me. And, you know, I start hearing messages and I start feeling things and I start getting direction and stuff like that. And then afterwards I feel really enlightened. I feel really good. I feel connected with the universe. Um, I don't know. It, it, does everyone have their own way of doing it or, it, you know, does, you know, or is, is there a certain way that a Reiki specialist can actually, you know, really do things that um that someone someone can't do by themselves you know what's the difference between self-reiki and actually going to a specialist that is you know really knows their stuff you know that they can do to help you you know get, get to the point where you want to be or understand yourself better or and heal yourself in in certain areas that you might be blocked and certain uh, obstacles you might be dealing with um, I think that the power of healing definitely exists in all of us. You know, when you're, when your child bumps its knee, you kiss it better. And, you know, when you are in church and we're praying for the sick, it's that intention, it's that energy, it's that pushing that positive thought and love and healing over to someone else. And we all know there are signs that backs people, the power of prayer, right? Um, yeah. I think that in our society now, we've probably lost touch a little bit with getting into um, the specifics of the energetic body, which is just like another organ and how we maintain that. I think that we sometimes get sideswiped if, um, you know, if we have a negative emotion or a reoccurring thought that we might, you know, exercise, we might eat, we might have an extra glass of wine and kind of mute that. Um, yeah. But if we sit still long enough and, you know, we look at like for instance, I think we were talking about it earlier, um, family issues, right? And that really for me, definitely equating to lower back issues, which is all about my root chakra. Um, yeah. And so for the longest time, I just kind of pushed it to the side, but it wasn't until I came back to my practice and really kind of analyzed it from a different perspective of why these issues are happening and why is it recurring and how it all aligns. Um, I think that anybody... I think anyone, if they are trained or taught or have the knowledge of what chakra aligns with what feeling um, and how we can very easily access that energetic healing um, and focus it on that specific chakra or on that feeling, um, you know, crystals, we have an amazing relationship for crystals. And I think sometimes we buy them and we put them somewhere and we just want it to do its work. Um, yeah. When I work with people... I do work with crystals on, um, I host workshops where we really tap into the power of the crystal and like, let's step into the crystal. Let's knock on its front door. Let's familiarize ourselves with like the healing powers that are associated with this crystal, the minerals that are associated with it. And again, with its vibrational frequency, because that also aligns with each energetic center. Um, but then once you kind of become friends and introduce yourself to that as silly as it sounds you can feel that energy flow more freely and then you can tap it into where you need it to tap in and it's something that you can carry with you and it's almost like the more you have it the more you touch it the more you connect with it and you think like okay um clear quartz i really want you to purify all the energy that's around me and amplify all of my crystals like it really does happen and i think too yeah what I say a lot, it's not magic, it's mindset. It's you putting that yeah. intention into making it happen. Oh, hundred percent. I agree. Now, if someone wants to start to really understand how to heal themselves, what would be the first step for a person when they, when they want to start healing themselves spiritually and they want to start being aligned and they want to feel better. They want to improve their mindset, their health, their overall well being. you know, what would be one of the first things that you suggest to somebody to help a person start healing themselves? What I wish someone would have told me <laughs> a, a long time ago um, was to a really focus, what is it that you want to heal first? And for me, 
I was getting kind of this like buckshot approach of energetic healing. And I'm like, oh my God, everything feels good. And so I want everything that helps everything. And I want it all right now. Um, and then it kind of gets a little bit muddled. And I wish that somebody would have guided me of, um, you know, we are struggling with corporate burnout. Like what is, what is continuing to cause that problem? And let's start there. Um, for me, I think to, I don't want to date myself, but when I started researching this, um, the internet didn't have an entirely lot of, there wasn't a lot of information and there was a lot of time spent in libraries. There's a lot of time trying to find the books like Barnes and Nobles, unfortunately did not have a huge metaphysical selection at the time. Um, um, but I will say, I think as far as the chakra system, there's some amazing, um, information out there that really aligns with the science that's backed with it and how it aligns with each um, nerve cluster, each organ, each gland. I think that's probably the first step. And two, I think we are all um, in different spaces in our spiritual practice. And I think when I hear some people on social media and they tell you that, you know, this is the way that you meditate with this crystal and every other way is wrong. Um, you know, we're all in different places and we all have unique healing gifts and how I practice Reiki, um, you know, working with Japanese and Egyptian Reiki, they're two very different forms of energetic healing. And there is no right or wrong way to intertwine both of them. And also working um, on myself. And to be honest, dependent on the day, I might work with one energy. I might work with another. I might work with sound. Um, and it's the same with clients. And so I think when you enter this, um, this journey and you embark on it is to do what feels right to you. And I hate that because I feel like it's so open-ended, but there are yeah. some things that practices that I really, really align with. And even with the shamanic practices that I was taught, like I wholeheartedly believe in that it doesn't work for everybody else. Um, but I think understanding the science behind it is probably the crucial first stepping stone. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you need that to step in, especially coming in with a skeptical mind. I think that was what helped me is um, I like to debunk and then seeing where there was, it was intertwined with the science that really helped me yeah. be like, okay, well, this isn't woo. It's not magic. Yeah. It's not mystical. It's not really even new age. It's ancient knowledge that's been around <laughs> forever. Yeah. There was, um, I was actually um, watching on Gaia. Um, they had a, um, they had a, a, um, a whole show with, uh, with uh, biologists and physicists and scientists, and they were explaining why energy healing is actually a something that works. And they were going, they were talking about, you know, going back thousands of years, and they were talking about now. And they actually had different tests that they showed people showing different vibrations and different different frequencies. And they showed how how if they brought in someone with positive energy or someone that wasn't yeah. sick, healthy how the machine would react and they had, they had put salt on top of the machine and then they had the vibrations make the salt move. Yeah. And so they had positive energy, positive people, healthy people come in and they had to, you know, they had to do different frequencies and, you know, stay by the machine. The, the actual sand was in like beautiful different sequences, you know, like heart, like, um, like circles and square like shapes. And, but when they had someone that was sick or someone that had negative energy and blockages come in and do the same thing, the sand was all over the place. Yeah. So immediately it picked up the different frequencies and, and the different, it, it picked up how, you know, a positive energy versus a negative energy and how two of the same type of people doing the same types of frequencies, same sounds, how it reacted so completely different. And, yeah. and their thing was that, you know, people with illnesses that, you know, it, energy healing could very well be a, a huge factor in healing the body when it comes to different illnesses and different diseases and actually science itself now can actually, you know, they're bringing in energy healing because they see how much of, a, of an impact it has on the body when you bring energy healing into a, a situation where someone is suffering from a condition or an illness. So it was really interesting when, yeah. when I saw segment yeah it was really interesting it shows you that it is not woo woo you know it, it shows you yeah. that it's something that's prevalent that's been prevalent for thousands of years and just by the test they ran you could see 
that, you know, that it has humongous potential in the way we live and the way we feel and our health too. Yeah. And I think too, the way our society here in America is kind of hardwired to produce, produce, produce. We're constantly on the run. We're constantly surrounded by devices. Um, and then you look at other cultures that do kind of run with the energetic system and do have a strong following and faith in it and how they take time and they separate and they really value, you know, vacation and self-reflection. Um, but it's all, I mean, I think whether with energy or with sound, it's all about relaxing our nervous system. And when our nervous system is not on overdrive, that's when that healing happens. And it's not just even at the physical body, it's the emotional um, spiritual, all of, I mean, it's all intertwined. Right. And I love that there's just new information almost daily and there's people picking it up. Um, even here in Nashville, there is someone who is working with frequency and specific fre frequency and how that aligns with specific forms of healing, whether it's at like a cellular level. Um, and I, I love that that's, that's a thing now. It wasn't even two years ago. I don't know if it was as prevalent as it is now, because I think we understand that like going to the doctor and maybe getting a prescription oh. isn't always in our best interest. It doesn't, yeah. it's not working out the way we thought it would work out. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I just want to go back a few steps. Like when you talked about Reiki, you talked about two different types of Reiki. Now, you know, when people think of Reiki, they just think of Reiki. They don't realize that there could be different types. And can you explain the two different types that you mentioned and what the differences between the two are? Yeah. So I started with the Sui Reiki. Um, it's the Japanese form of Reiki. Um, and for me, it felt like we were, maybe my mom are talking about it. It was almost like the gateway drug, right? Like it kind of just opened everything up in a very new, unique, um, and a very mandatory, like I, I needed to see things through that lens at that time. Um, yeah. for me, and I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone, but for me, the Asui Japanese form of Reiki is very groundy. It feels very, um, like of the earth, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, and so after I learned that through a sequence of events, I was introduced to someone um, to take an apprenticeship with a shaman. And so that energy healing really kind of complemented all of the shamanic rites, because that was another form of energetic transmissions um, to reinform my DNA. And so yeah. when I started working with both of those, that then ultimately led me down the path Um through that process, um, Egypt kept coming up and I never really had an attraction to it, but yeah. I kept getting, um, a lot of messages from ISIS and Sekma and it wasn't anything that I really studied. So I didn't understand it, but I felt this urge, um, to do it. And then learning, um, there's like a handful of people at most that teach Egyptian Sakem Sakim Reiki. Yeah. Um, one of them is in Knoxville and she's an amazing woman and Knoxville is just a couple hours drive. So um, took my husband, we spent the weekend there and that yeah. just um, blew everything up. And that form of Reiki for me, um, I would say with the Japanese form, it's, it's very, um, it gently kind of encompasses you almost like in a hug, like just kind of gently embraces you. And then we get to everything that we need to get to. And with Sekhme, it just gets in immediately. Um, like for instance, one of the women that I gave a treatment to, um, it was within 24 hours and she was thinking about a dog that she had and how that dog had really been through everything that she had been through, through divorces, through trauma. And, but it was the thought of the dog that had this huge emotional purge because then she was able to reflect. And it sounds silly, but also I don't think that she would have thought about that had she not had that energetic healing, but it just gets in. And I think a way that is comfortable for us to understand, and it's a little bit more, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but it gets to the the root of the problem very quickly. Um, yeah. I noticed a lot of times when I use, um, and I intertwine both forms, um, but it's almost an instant sense of relaxation. Um, yeah. Usually like with the theta brainwave, you're in that meditative state, like it's almost instant. And I can see, you know, the eyeballs moving behind the eyelids. So you know that they're visualizing something um, yeah. and just the sense of when they leave, 
my treatment um it's just kind of this uh a sense of i need to relax and be still and i don't know if anybody leaves my reiki treatments and they're like let's go to downtown broadway and do all the things it's we need to yeah. rest and reflect um and and i love that because it's really really powerful things that come through for people like that um whereas for me when i did it i look at it in the course of a year when i learned um ssr reiki the egyptian reiki just the transformation and coming into my own and really wanting to move into more um more of this work with my community and not feeling that fear and feeling that power of Sekhmet, which is like this warrior goddess who also heals, um, which I feel like that really kind of encompasses who I am. Like I can yeah. go to battle or I can make everything better and heal. And um, I love that duality because I think as women, we both have that duality, that ferocious, yeah. um, we will, you know, like mother, the mama lion, um, you know, yeah. we we can be that ferocious person, but we're also very nurturing and loving and we have that duality and it can split um, really in, in the snap of a finger. I know when I, when I do Reiki, I feel very <clears throat> lightened. I feel lighter, like this yeah. lighter feeling. And is there a reason for that? Why you feel that enlightened feeling? Um, I think, well, A, we're letting our nervous system kind of relax. Um, you're in a position where usually the lights are dimmed. Um, I work with, I open almost all of my sessions um, with crystal bowls. Each bowl is aligned to a specific energy center. Um, and really this, the bowls tell me what they want to be played and, and what frequency. And sometimes like there's a lot of like, we need to ground with the root chakra um, and we also need to bring in energy from the crown. Um, yeah. But you can see how people respond to those different frequencies and tones as well. Um, and so I think because your nervous system is lowering, you're in a space to allow yourself to meditate, right? And allow yourself to um, be invited for deeper self-reflection, um, deeper connection to yourself, um, a deeper sense of how you connect to others. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just feel like it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful space to allow yourself to just be. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I agree with you a hundred percent. I think it's, it's pretty amazing, you know, how, um, Reiki works and how, you know, is this something that you would actually, um, do more than once a week? Is this something that you practice on an ongoing basis? Like, you know, do, what's, what's usually typically the best way to practice Reiki? Um, again, I think it's dependent on the person. There isn't a one size fits all. Um, I, it's my opinion that when we are being moved through very deep lessons, like a divorce, um, you know, the loss of a family member or friend, I don't think that having back-to-back -back Reiki sessions is beneficial. Um, sometimes we need that kind of rest and reset. And, you know, if we're moving big emotions, um, I like to see people once a month, but I also, um, when we work through each of our seven energetic centers, it's about every two weeks that we will hit um, with an energetic treatment, but there's also coursework in between that. So like, why is this emotion coming up? And let's kind of work backwards. When was the first time that you felt this emotion? And usually um, I would say 99% of the time, there's something that happened with childhood or from childhood that is stagnating you in present day. And so yeah. it's a really beautiful place because you kind of do let those um, guards down, right? Um, it's a very, no ju like judgment-free zone um, and we're doing deep work. And so when we can look at that, um, I would say every two weeks, I mean, that's like a very, like you were in the mindset for significant change and you want to see that change. Um, and I think too, like I said, it's every person's journey is so different and it's so yeah. unique. I think when you work with somebody who can give you that really personalized bespoke approach, instead of just collecting that fee, telling you to drink some water, take an affirmation card for the road, and we'll see you next time. Um, yeah. When you create a roadmap that's beneficial to that person, that's where the magic happens, you know, not yeah. to throw on the term magic, but there, there is a method to the madness. There is a methodical approach to everything. Um, yeah. 
And each person, I mean, we're all going through different crap at different stages of life. And the crap that I went through like a year ago is so different from what is happening today. Um, Right. But I know how to access that energy and kind of like almost paint whatever negative emotion um, or feeling or sensation, I can kind of paint it into a corner and isolate it and then work through it. Um, And I, I just, I think that when you teach people how to do that, there's constantly moments where light hits things that we have worked through in different ways. And so we see the dirt from a different angle if that yeah. makes sense. Um, and so it's, it's a constant for some people, um, it is a lifelong challenge to work mm-hmm. through some of these problems. Cause you're constantly analyzing and I'm a Gemini. So my head's always up in the clouds, but, you know, suffering from, you know, a narcissistic parent and realizing, you know, a lifetime of abuse, essentially seeing mm-hmm. it from different angles and seeing it as my children get older and seeing how, awful some of those things were it's a constant state of healing and I can't fault myself because there are times where I'm like god you worked so hard on this why are we backtracking it's not backtracking it's evolution it's just working on it in a different way right a hundred percent a hundred percent so do you think for people they should they it's good to start learning how to meditate and relax and calm yourself is that one of the techniques they should start to practice is meditation getting themselves to that level that state of calmness Um, I think meditation is great for everyone. I think I, I am the first one that will raise my hand that with quieting my mind, I really, really struggle. Um, and I think too, when you work with things like the bowls, right, it's like almost like a distraction. And I've tried different mudras. I've done yoga. I've worked with someone, you know, professionally to meditate. My brain goes 50 different directions within Mm -hmm. 50 seconds. Um, but I think too, there is no I, I will say this. I think there is no right or wrong way to meditate. I think for playing the bowls for me, I instantly kind of get into that zone. When I listen to binaural beats, instantly yeah. I can kind of hit that meditative state. Um, and I think too, if you're new to meditating, listening to the beats um, and headphones really, so it kind of encompasses you, but also yeah. having a journal and just writing things down. And I have journals of of what I thought at the time was just scribbles, like even, uh, you know, seeing a spiral, well, what does a spiral mean? That's so representative in so many different cultures, but also, um, you know, writing down dad and then writing down an emotion that's maybe attached to that. And even if it's a friend, it doesn't have to always be a family member. It could be gibberish. Like for the longest time I kept seeing a building with books in it. And I later learned that that was the Akashic records. Um, yeah. But I kept seeing the same, monolithic type room with books. And then I realized what it was. And then once I got there, I asked if I could go inside of it. And then it just kind of like, you know, invited myself to just dive deeper, but it's meditation's hard. It is hard. And I think however there, and I think Reiki is a great way to get there because you are, we're working on clearing those energetic channels. We're working on those organs that are maybe storing emotions. Um, And then once you kind of, it's almost like when you get your car detailed and then you just need to go and have like it rinsed off every once in a while um, and you learn how to rinse it. But the deep dive, um, I think whatever path that takes you there is the path that's meant for you. And that's why I struggle. I think everybody has such a different approach and there is no right or wrong way to do it. Yeah. I, for me, I, I like the sound bowls and I like the chakra bowls and, and the, the vibrations actually, that that's the quickest also for me to get mm-hmm. into that meditative state, you know, and to be able to actually get into that, that state where I feel very connected. I feel very, you know, I, I, I'm kind of like outside myself. I'm just yeah. like, you know, connecting with the, with the universe. I could feel it. I can feel the connection. I can feel the positive energy around me. I can feel, yeah, I feel different, you know, but for me also like, it, you know, meditation is great, but for me, the vibrations and, and the sound bowls and the chakra bowls and, and, you know, that's actually what gets me also 
into that state of mind that I need for healing, you know, and I, I find that really, really uh, beneficial. Now for, for people that want to maybe start doing some exercises at home that maybe want to try to start the healing process before they see like a, a spiritual healer like yourself and they, they get, you know, they get the, the help and guidance they need and like actually can learn the proper ways of doing things. If they want to do some exercises at home, are there some things they can do at home or, you know, can they purchase certain things? and, you know, practice certain things at home to, to help them, you know, in the process while they're seeing, you know, someone like yourself who is a healer? Yeah, I think um, the easiest access, right? Um, YouTube has amazing frequencies. I love um, 528 Hertz. I just, I think that's the heart frequency um, that just mm -hmm. immediately kind of relaxes me, but also don't be afraid to play with it. There's nothing that's going to hurt you while you're listening yeah. to it. Um, also when you're talking about the vibration, um, gongs, I think are amazing. It's something that you can also put on your desk, but you look at monks and how they meditated and they have, yeah. you know, like 20 foot gongs that are out, um, anything sound related. Some people respond more. I noticed to like shells. Um, I have an ocean drum. There's some people that love that. There's some people that yeah. love the Tibetan bowls and there's some people that swear by the crystal bowls. Um, but I think. I think an easy way to access that energy, um, start with sound. It might be classical music. It might be binaural beats. Um, but just allowing yourself a moment to be quiet. And I think when we put the intention of being quiet, because sometimes we rush through these things or like, I might light incense, but I don't think about the intention behind it. Um, yeah. but just giving yourself that space and intending for that space to only access everything that is for your greatest good everything yeah. that is healing um i think too even people that use sage we just kind of like you know do it around the house but like let the smoke purify me and i like to teach people even in workshops or you know <laughs> now my you know family and friends that are new to this but just closing your eyes taking those deep breaths listening to the sounds around you and just connecting with their source of light and whether that's God, whether it's source energy, whether it's universal energy and allowing it to come down and imagine it coming from your crown, the top of your head and going all the way through your body, but just infiltrating every single muscle with light, every cell with light, almost until it's like overfilling your body and spilling out. And that can yeah. take all of like two minutes. It's not even anything that has to be long, but setting that intention to bring that light down through the base. Um, yeah. and we also, I do believe that we have a soul star, right. And we have different chakras that go outside of this body, but connecting from what's above us to what's below us, because they're both equally important and a tree can only grow as tall as its roots are deep. Um, and sometimes people really focus on like, Oh, we got to raise the vibrations, which is great, but we also have to anchor down into that root earth energy. Um, so we can be planted firmly and allow ourselves to grow. All right. And that makes sense. That makes sense. So many people want to open their crown and they want to experience these beautiful things. And, but yes, that is so true. You have to be grounded. You have to have those roots in order to, like you said, that's a perfect analogy, the tree, you know, yeah. in order to you know, a, a big, big, large tree, you have to have grounded roots, you have to let those roots grow and become strong. And then the tree will start to flourish and grow. You know, and I think that's a great, a great example, you know, totally, totally. Yeah. So is there a lot of different, you know, um, so, so everyone has their own methods and they, their own ways. Like, you know, if, let's say if someone's suffering from, you know, anxiety, you know, is there, is there something they could do to help themselves, you know, at home, you know, either with a, with a sound bowl or chakra bowl, or maybe some type of exercise that they can do even when it comes to breathing or something that you know of that you find very beneficial in your own practice. Um, I think the power of crystals, um, is hugely underrated and a lot of people use it for decor. Um, yeah. I think for grounding, um, like I have a huge piece of tourmaline that stays, um, just next to my computer because I feel like it just kind of absorbs all of that energy. 
Um, but also I will sit with it because there are times, despite me constantly working on myself where I get like very excited, um, that I might get burnt out. And then I start feeling that anxiety because I start doing a mental checklist of like, okay, well, I need to do these things for work. I need to do these things for kids and I'm already behind and how am I going to do it all? And you go down the rabbit hole, right? Um, but I think instead of just grabbing this crystal and hoping that it does its magic, um, let's invite ourselves. Let's knock on the door of the crystal. Let's ask it if we can come in to introduce ourselves. Um, yeah. And, you know, really thinking about that crystal's energy and what frequency it's at, um, you know, for grounding root chakra, which is at the base of our spine, but holding it there. But again, the intention, right? It's the mindset, not the magic. Yeah. Um, and I think too, the most important thing is acknowledging that you're having a human experience and it's okay. Um, but I think crystals are so easy because you can put them in your pocket. You can put them, yeah. you know, around your desk. I think it's just the part that we don't, um, we don't address the specific need that we want the crystal to work with. Right. Yeah. And then we also don't ask you know, it's, it's a relationship just like with anything else. And there's an energy exchange. Like I'm going to give you all of my anxiety. You give me all of the calming energy. Um, and you know, how do we maintain that? And I think right. it's, um, I don't think it's a, a complex concept. It's just not something that we talk about. It's something, you know, cause there's crystal stores and I am a slave to them just like anything else. Cause I see something shiny and I think they all yeah. need help. And that home should be with me. Um, yeah. but, but no one, you, you purchase it and then you walk away with it. I don't know if anybody explains really like, Hey, take a second. And this is how you tune into this. And this is, you know, how you use this. And this is the, you know, purpose of the stone. And this is where even, um, Vedic gemstones are amazing. They get down to where they're pulled out of the earth and like your astrological okay. sign and your birth chart. And that stone is specifically aligned with what you need specifically. And I love that. Yeah, I love that too. And I think you're completely right. You know, we have, we call them rock shops in New Jersey and yeah. you know, there's so many of them and you go there and people are buying crystals and they're buying healing rocks and, 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 but they're, they're leaving with them. And a lot of those, those healing rocks don't even have the name or the purpose on it. And, and people are buying them. And I don't think a lot of people do, really do know what to do. I don't think a lot of people know how to cleanse them or use them or, you know, and I think that's, you know, one of the things that I think people, you know, they, they think by having them in their surroundings where they mostly are at or have the pointy points of the rock, you know, pointed to them, you know, yeah. they feel that that's the way that, you know, it'll be most beneficial because no one does really explain how to utilize them. When you go into those stores, you know, you, you find the rocks that, that you want, you know, for whatever purpose you're looking for, and then you purchase it. And then, you know, nobody really explains anything to you or shows you how to actually use them. Yeah. And I, I do think that people, are attracted to what they need. Um, I have a friend who has a crystal shop and he's very adamant about letting people pick what they're drawn to and then explaining why they pick this because the stone has this property and it vibrates at this frequency and it's good for this heart chakra. Um, you know, and then he kind of dives in like, well, what's going on? Is there anything happening? And usually it's like this whole emotional, um, <laughs> therapeutic exchange for your crystal. And I love that. Yeah. Um, there, I think too, um, when you talked about maintaining it, it's, it's almost like if you brought home a puppy, cause you want that love and affection, but you never, you know, you don't give it attention. You don't cleanse it properly. You just leave it in the corner. Like ultimately they go dead, you know, and even with yeah. an EMF detector, like there is frequency coming off of these crystals. Um, yeah. they're like their own little entity and we just have to treat them like, well, <laughs> I treat them like my babies. Yeah. No, they, they need to be treated like they're, they're, they're like they're your, your babies. Is there any like books or anything that w there are any like websites that people can go to that you know of off the top of your head or a thing, or maybe something they, they could do to learn more about the crystals? Because I think just what we talked about is so important because I think people just buy them and just put them in their presence and they think that's it. You know, is there a better way of explaining it? Because a lot of people, when I talk about crystals, they know what they are but they have no clue how they actually work, you know, and they, they yeah, don't get it. Um, I think we are in this amazing time where Google will tell us anything and everything. And yeah. 
Um, I think even, you know, it's the same with what feels good for you because there's some things that I will look up and, you know, I'll see the properties. Um, Carnelian is one. I love Carnelian. It's very mm -hmm. much a stone to help yeah. you conceive. I don't know if that's where I'm at, but it's also like yeah. a stone that um, encourages a lot of other activity in the root chakra. But, you know, as soon as I saw like, you know, it's the stone of pregnancy, I was like, maybe I should take it out of the bedroom because that was not what I was going for. <laughs> but also that wasn't why I chose it. Like I know that that wasn't yeah. why I chose it at the time. Um, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people gravitate to rose quartz, right? But if you look it up, there's 8 billion things that will come up for rose quartz. And it's, you know, kind of like the everywhere stone. Um, I think off the top of my head, there's a couple people that I follow on Instagram. Um, I would have to maybe plug it in the comments um, on the YouTube page. There's one woman who is absolutely amazing and I adore her and she really gets into the energetics um, and she touches on a lot of topics. Um, and I talked to him with people that I worked with too, like Moldavite. I do not think that's a stone that just anybody yeah. should put their hands on. It is, I mean, it'll mess you up. Like it gets right into this kind of very divine connection and information. And every time that I need creativity, um, if it's like a workbook that I'm working on or a workshop and I need that like extra push, like it just yeah. energizes, but I also cannot sleep. Like I just need to plan on being up. And I know that it's from that stone. Um, a lot of people might know that. And a lot of people like stash stuff under their pillows. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Oh my God. That's so funny. Yeah. I, I love healing rocks and I, I think that's great that, you know, I think there's a lot of great information and resources on the website that could actually help people learn how to use it the proper way. And I think it's so important. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you want to emphasize on a, a, a couple of important factors that you want listeners to understand, like what are some things that you want listeners to understand when it comes to healing yourself? Um, I think that the most important thing is it's not magic. There is work attached to this. Um, every time that you get an energetic um, treatment, I think that it's important to know that you need to have support following that treatment. Um, if your Reiki practitioner or energe energetic practitioner does not make themselves available to you, um, I would question that because it is hard work and there's a lot of repressed things that will come up. Um, and I think too, understanding that everything someone else is doing is also available to you. You just have to be attuned to it. Um, first and foremost, you have to be ready. You have to be ready yeah. for, because it is a way of healing. Um, but it's not just for people who are struggling emotionally. It's for, you know, anybody, you know, my energy overall will get slumped sometimes and just, you know, aligning with that, that, um, energetic organ and making sure that yeah. it's maintained just like everything else. Um, I can tell a noticeable difference. Um, I think it's important just for people to know that, um, every, the flow of the energy throughout your body is really, it just enhances this overall well being. It's not woo. It's not, um, you know, mystical. It's not for people that are just hanging out in crystal shops, looking for a quick fix. Um, it's meaningful work and it does change your life. If you have the right mindset to allow, um, space for that change. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And can you tell people the different services that you provide? Yeah. Um, so I, uh, do sound baths and energetic healing, um, for people that are local or traveling to Nashville. Um, we also do them, um, in a distance or remote setting. Um, I have a 90 day program for those of us that are working through burn burnout, um, where we really dive deep on the energetic centers and just having a holistic approach to, um, success essentially. Um, and, and we are doing sound baths and meditations for bachelorette parties here um, with special crystals um, that are appropriate for bachelorette system or parties. Um, but it really, it's it's just an overall way of living your life differently. Um, yeah. I think, and I think that's accomplished through more of a bespoke approach in a program that's ninety days, um, six months, and that's really where I feel like we do the most important work because we're teaching people, um, 
to do it themselves because everybody yeah. can, and that's what's so special. And that's, you know, the more people that are happy, healthy, healed, um, the better the world is. And we need that right now. Oh, we definitely do. And I feel it's so important to have a spiritual coach or a spiritual healer and, you know, someone to guide you along the way, because there's so much involved and they pick up on so many things that us as individuals can't. Yes, we can, like we talked about doing exercises at home and, and keeping up with it and, and that type of stuff, but you really need somebody that's really experienced like yourself to actually help people understand the things that they overlook and they don't see, you know, because a lot of times spiritual healers will pick up on certain energies. They'll pick up on certain things. They can tell, you know, certain things are going on. They can tell where the blockages are, where, you know, a lot of times we may not be able to, you know, exactly tell where those blockages are coming from. We may, we might not feel a whole with ourselves, but we don't know exactly what's going on where you have a, you have a healing coach or you have a, an energy coach and you have somebody who is experienced in this area that could start the process and then watch over you and then guide you and, and explain to you what the next steps are and what you need to do. And here's what I'm telling you, you to do. What I feel that will help you. And it's kind of like a two-way, you know, process where, you're guiding them, you're teaching them, you're helping them, and then they have to do the work. And yeah. then with, with those two things combined, a lot of great things could happen. You know, if people wanted yeah. to contact you, where could they contact you? Um, they can always go to my website. It's www.modernhippiesoul.com. Um, or they can follow me on Instagram at modern hippie soul and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Now, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience that you feel is beneficial that we may not have tapped on in our conversation? Yeah, I just thought about it actually um, when we were talking about the benefits of just having um, someone to coach you through healing and guide. Um, every healer has been through, they've been through it and we've done a lot of healing. And I think that's why it's so important to share um, just how we survived, right. And yeah. how we got to the other side of it. And so yeah. I think one of my favorite parts with working, um, on a deeper level with people in these one-on-one -on -one sessions is that, um, very quickly I can pull out when you are trying to sidestep something or when you're trying to divert attention. Right. Um, and yeah. I like to trigger people because it's never going to get fixed if we keep bypassing yeah. Um, and even spiritually bypassing, right. With the crystals yes. or going to the sound baths and, um, you know, seeing how people react and seeing these emotions and kind of shining the light where you're refusing to shine the light yourself. Um, yes. and then, you know, allowing you to see the light shine on yourself and, and just this all, you know, and the beautiful, amazing, strong, capable person that you are, um, yeah. I think that is really what this work is all about. Um, and, you know, once we learn that tool, it's so easy and it's contagious and you just spread it yeah. to other people because you start picking out the things that you, you know, you see in others, what you yourself went through. And I love right. that because it's just um, it'll catch on. It's a wildfire. Yeah, definitely is a wildfire. This has been awesome, Shannon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And just before we go, I want you to just repeat your website to make sure everybody heard it. Yeah, it's www.modernhippiesoul.com. Um, and if you go there, there is a free workbook to um, engage one of your chakras so you can start your journey today. That's awesome. That's awesome. This has been a great experience. I love what you do. And like I said, I practice it. I am a wholehearted believer. I've seen the changes in myself. If this is something you need and you definitely do need a spiritual coach with you, guiding you along the way. You know, you do need a, you know, someone to help you along the way. Cause it's, it's something that you need. It's, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's, you, you need a guide and you need someone to really explain things to you because someone who knows more that's been, been experienced and been through it has learned it and that can actually guide you through it and teach you and help you heal. And what a great experience when you can finally learn how to heal yourself and you can start to see yourself and change. And you also know the differences, you know, when things are going on, you know, when things are, are changing in your body, you know, when you have to devote special attention to certain areas of your life and you become more and more aware. And that's the great thing about it. So Shannon, thank you so much for coming on this show and everybody, she has her own podcast. So make sure you go on her podcast 
podcast. Look at her shows. She is awesome. She is great. And I'm so happy you came on the show today. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Yes, same here. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.